Now, if you fancy the Rolls-Royce that Vicky drove in Vienna, but you don't have £235,000, then you're in luck, because here are my cheapskate alternatives. Imperious luxury, bags of grunt and road presents to make you feel like royalty. These are the best cheapskate alternatives to the Rolls-Royce Wraith. And instead of costing over 200 grand, they start at just two. My cheapest choice is a massive status symbol with a tiny price. The Jaguar XJ8 from just £2,000. This generation of the XJ, codenamed the X308, is one of the best value luxury cars on sale. It will make you look and feel like a king on a budget of a peasant. This Jag came from an age before diesels were acceptable in luxury cars. And they all came with a V8 petrol engine mated to a five-speed box. And the only downside to that is fuel economy. And fuel economy, that will rival a Rolls-Royce. You'll be lucky if you get 20 to the gallon. But I'll tell you what, the fuel economy, it's just not relevant when you're driving something oh, as lovely as this. It's so quiet, it's so refined, it's so luxurious. £2,000. A laptop computer is more expensive than this car. The XJ is now a reliable car, but there's one big issue. Cars built before September 2000 had cylinders lined with a material called Nicosil, which is a mixture of nickel, silicon and carbon. Now, the aim of this was to strengthen the internals of the aluminium engine, but this Nicosil was eroded by sulphur in the petrol, causing total and utter engine failure. Cars built after September 2000 had steel linings and are fine, but if you're buying a car from before, you want to see proof that it's had a replacement engine. An XJ with a sorted motor will be a treat, but an extra £2,000 buys you something more modern, the BMW 7 Series for just four grand. Now, Rolls-Royce is owned by BMW, so it only seems fair that I should include a Beamer as one of my alternatives. And this E65, well, it's astonishing value. They came with anything from a three-litre diesel to a whopping six-litre V12 petrol, and there's no doubt that the diesel is the more sensible choice. It'll do 30 to the gallon and still kick you over 140 miles an hour. It's pretty grunty, it's smooth, it's refined, the gearbox works well. It's a great bit of kit. The 7 Series feels much newer and more luxurious than its price suggests. Here's my buying advice. BMW say these transmissions are sealed for life, which means you don't have to have the fluid change during a service. But with these cars now having a few miles under their belts, experts now recommend that you do have their fluids changed. So make sure it's been done. Otherwise, a new gearbox, three grand. Check the alloys for curb damage and keep an eye out for soft tyres. Seven series rims are known to go porous with age, but you'll only know if they're leaking after monitoring the pressures for about a week. But soft tyres are a good giveaway. A 250 quid refurb will see them right. BMW might own Rolls-Royce, but they can't match the real thing. My final choice is a corker, the Silver Spirit 2, from just 10 grand. Don't call me Plato, call me Parker. Yes, my lady. We're being powered by a six and three quarter litre V8 petrol engine with around 215 brake horsepower. Now, I say around because Rolls-Royce were a little cagey about releasing the exact numbers for the fear of being vulgar. Or perhaps it was because a Golf GTI of the same era was quicker. It's a genuine aristocrat's car, but make sure previous owners haven't skimped on maintenance. An annual service from a specialist can cost as little as 600 quid, so there's no excuse for it not being done. Other telltale signs of neglect are untreated rust on the wheel arches, cracked leather seats and mismatched tyres. So if it hasn't been loved, then you don't want to. 
Champagne cars for lemonade money. These are the best cheapskate alternatives to the Rolls-Royce rate. <laughs>